My name is Adriana, and this is Many Roads, No Rules. I don't plan ahead what road I will take next, because I want those roads to find me, so I find myself. Please join me on this new adventure. Hello there. As, as you know already, I am in the middle of the Sonoran Desert near Quartzsite for the RTR. The RTR to me has been one of the best experiences I could have imagined in terms of learning how to be, to, how to be a nomad, but mostly learning how happy the community is, all the people here, and uh, why they are happy, because of what we do. I mean, we, we are just nomads. We are happy with that. We get to be in beautiful places. We get to talk with fantastic people. So, and uh, today I'm going to show you what I consider is the main video about the RTR. Do I recommend coming to the RTR in January? Yes, strongly recommend it. The main event was inaugurated, opened by, of course, Bob Wells. And if you have seen any of his videos, you probably notice he has this charming personality. In person, it's even more powerful because you see this very regular person, nothing out of the ordinary, with very clear ideas, a great sense of humor, and uh, peace in his soul. At first, I, I thought the whole group may be creating kind of a cult around him, but I don't think so now. I think he's bigger than life, for sure, and it's such a pleasure to listen to him explain things. In this video I'm going to show you, he explains why he likes doing, for example, Carl Jung, uh, the, the psychologist, and how important those thoughts are and how they apply to our type of life, the nomadic life. Um, but then, of course, I mean, there are many more interesting thoughts around all of that. So I will also show you some other speakers that uh, took turns during over the, the whole week uh, explaining ideas, explaining how to do things. And uh, I am going to make a, one video separately about working when you are on the road, working as a nomad. There was a whole section dedicated to that and it's super interesting. But today, let's listen to Bob. It was an honor to be there. It was a pleasure to be there. And do I recommend you come to the RTR next January to listen to him and all the other people that participate? Yes, I do. So I hope you like it. Let's take a listen. Testing, one, two, three, four, five. Boy, I hear it loud up here. That's what counts, isn't it? That I can hear myself? <laughs> so, uh, I'd like to get a little bit of feedback from you. Are you guys finding camping okay? Yeah. Good. And are you, most importantly... Oh, cold. <laughs> uh, this is all... He's always done this. Uh, are you finding... Uh, making friends and building community? Is that going okay? Good. I, that's because that's really the primary purpose, that's why we're here, is to make friends and build community. Well, we're just getting started. Uh, so do, uh, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> okay, Chris, Tracy, why don't you take him? He's not happy. Come on, go. 
Uh, we've been doing this for a little while. We, we like it. We think it uh, contributes to community and to, uh, to people's lives. And that's the whole reason we do it. The only reason we do it, uh, this costs you nothing. It will cost you nothing. It's our goal to never, ever have to charge. Pardon me? Uh, so, um, and we hope your lives are made better because of it. Uh, the background. Uh, so I started, I've been living in a vehicle for 16 years now, not continuously, but for 16 years. And um, about uh, in, in 2008, I lived in Alaska all my life. I lived for six years in a vehicle in Alaska, in my van. And then when I came to the lower 48, I wanted to just boondock and, uh, and just travel and do be a full-time complete nomad, not live in a house anymore. I hated living in a house. So when I came down here in 2008, I started traveling in my, uh, at the time it was a four-wheel drive pickup with a camper shell. And uh, I had been a member of a group called Yahoo's. Yahoo's Yahoo.com originally was the big mover and shaker on the internet back before everybody. There, were, there was no social media back then. They were the original social media. And they had groups, and there was a group called Van Dwellers, and I was a member of that group. And they put together gatherings. I'd already been to two or three gatherings, and I loved the gatherings. I got to meet people. I was no longer alone. I, you know, I, I just really, and I learned so much at the gatherings. And so uh, it became really important to me that we ha continue building gatherings. And so I started the website in 2005, and in 2011 was the first one. I think it was 2011 was the first RTR, exactly on that same principle, just a gathering. And so uh, that's the background, just the idea. And then I had, by then I had the website going, and by 2011, after the 2008 economic crash, it was doing really well. It was getting a lot of traffic, a lot of visitors, because people were desperate. They were, after, after the 2008-9 recession, they were desperate for help, and so they found my website, and they came, and they learned about it. And so it's been, we started at the end, and it's been growing ever since. That's the background. I do believe that outdoors is pretty safe. That's the science is really good there, that outdoors, you're pretty safe. Um, but uh, even so, I think it's common sense, even outdoors, to maintain six feet. So normally in these things, I do a lot of, uh, uh, I would do a lot of um, meet and greets, and Sell and pictures, and that usually means us hugging each other and getting real close. And I'm asking you that uh, you will forgive me, and I won't do that this year uh, because that's just tempting fate too much. But uh, I do have a, a booth. I have a booth set up over here, and I've surrounded myself by tables that will maintain the six foot distance, and I feel safe, and I won't wear a mask. And you're welcome to come. And if I'm over there, you're welcome to come and say hello and and get to know me a little bit, just a little bit, because there will be a lot of people. So uh, that's basically it. Uh, just common, uh, to my mind, these are just common sense things. You wouldn't go into a surg surgical room without a mask on. I wouldn't, go, you know, if I was in a room where someone was sick and contagious, I would wear a mask. That's just common sense. So that's what I'm doing, and that's kind of, uh, if if you're going to be close with him to me, that's what I ask of you. Um, and if you don't want it, that's fine. I, it's your right, of course, to not do that. But it's my right to ask you to do that or to stay away. So uh, we both, that way both of our rights are respected. And so uh, that's what's important, that we respect each other and we treat each other with respect and dignity. And I want to do that with you, and I hope you'll do that with me. Okay, I think I'm done there. Uh, just kind of an amazing thing. Have any of you experienced that in your time? You've met someone and then they keep showing up. <laughs> you're not planning it. You're just, you're brought together. And I believe that, uh, I believe that that's, uh, I think the road provides and that one of the things we really, really desperately need is community. And there will be a time when your friend, your newfound friend will need your help. And there will be a time when you're, you need your newfound friend's help. And wow, just at the right time, they'll be there. And so it's well worth it uh, to, to build that community. So we hope you're out building community. I do recommend that you go to freecampsites.net. Go Join a caravan, first and foremost. That's what I do recommend the most. And then next, go to freecampsites.net. They have all the main camping areas in Quartzsite with a pin, with a GPS, with directions. They even give you a report on the Internet. The Internet's not been good this year, generally, overall. I don't know why. It's just been, not been a good year for the Internet. I guess it's more crowded than usual. I don't know. But uh, 
uh, go there, and that's a starting point. And I like to think when we were all together, we had 10,000 was our last real gathering we were together. And I like to think of it as you create a neighborhood. And then in that neighborhood, you build your bungee cord relationships. And those, and I can't tell you how many people I've known that left here together with their new friends and then traveled together and then summer came and they separated and then they, when they came back, they gathered again and they, they created their own neighborhood and they had friends, they had someone they could call on in a time of need and someone that I, they could call on them in their time of need. That's just an amazing, wonderful thing. So please be building community. And that's all I have to say about that. This is also a quote from one of the medis one of the studies. We are inclined to we are inclined to think of hunter and gatherers as poor. We're inclined to people who live in to think of people who live in their vans as poor. Don't a lot of people think of you as poor? And by society standards, aren't we poor? Yeah. We don't have two cars in a garage. We don't even have a garage. We don't even have a house. We're poor. <laughs> we are inclined to think of hunter gatherers as poor because they don't have anything. Perhaps better to think of them for that reason as free yeah right we might be poor by a six society standards the six society we live in it is sick that lives on competition and greed says we're poor and we're failures and we're losers and boy did i feel that in 1995 but the truth is by a true human objective standard, we're free. Their extremely limited material possessions relieve them of all cares with regard, regard to daily necessities and permit them, very powerful words coming up here. Let me say that again. Their extremely limited material possessions relieve them of all cares with regard to daily necessities and permit them to enjoy life. You get to enjoy life. Yeah, you're poor <laughs> by society's six standards, but you get to enjoy life. You get to be free. And so uh, I just think these are, are just uh, really, really wonderful and basic truths. Now I want to share, um, where is that? Did I bring that with me? <clears throat> I hope I did. I did. Okay. So we're not going to become hunter gatherers, are we? No one. It's just a completely impractical. The idea we're not going to become homesteaders, although that's a really valid uh, way to think in terms of an objective standard to live by. It's just not practical. You can't go out and kill animals, and you're going to you're going to run into the law. There's not enough animals. Uh, it's just not. None of us are going to become hunter gatherers as they were uh, ten thousand years ago. It's just not practical. I think it may be that day may be coming. And it wouldn't be a bad idea to learn some of those skills, but we're not there yet. Uh, so I think that what I want to say is that there are four elements from the hunter-gatherer life, four principles that you can apply to your life, and you can be free and happy. And they're really relationships and connections. And the first is a relationship, there are four of them, relationship to things, relationship to people, relationship to nature, and relationship to the sacred. Mm -hmm. Now, first comes relationship to things. As we saw, if you read this, if you get this book, if you download, again, go to Google, just go to Google and uh, look up Marshall Salins, Stone Age, uh, the original affluent society. You can download as a PDF that first chapter and it's everything you need. The rest is all science and it's not very interesting. Uh, the first chapter, he just lays out all these things we've been covering and so much more that we can't begin to touch. I really recommend you download it. Um, it's the right, the objective standard of how to live is to have no value of things. You don't treasure things, you don't love things. If something is not useful, it's in your way, you throw it away. And we have institutionalized loving things. And so you and I don't feel that way about it. We love our things. Many of you have just gone through the process of downsizing and fitting into a van or an RV. And you found it to be very, I'm sure, I know I did, and nearly everyone I've ever talked to found it very, very difficult. We have institutionalized loving things. So all I can tell you is that if you know 
that the objective standard is that you do not love things, you only use them, and if they're not useful, you get rid of them. If they're harmful, you get rid of them, because you don't love them. If you will know that in your heart and your mind, and you just work on it on a daily basis to make that the reality in your life, your life will be far, far better. You will align yourself with an objective standard of how human beings should live. And it won't be easy, and it'll take a long time, and uh, once you think you've got it, you'll find out you don't have it because here's all my ha my van is full of crap again. It's, I mean, I, it's, it, I've been doing this a long time, and I turn around every so often and think, how did my van get full of all this crap? It's it's a virus. It's a our society. This is a virus that our society teaches us because it makes our society work. It's a disease. It's an evil virus that you're taught from childhood, from the cradle to the grave, greed and desire for more is taught into us. You weren't born with it. You learned it and you can unlearn it. And you're just gonna to have to work at it. The second relationship is the relationship with people. And so we have to reverse our relationships with money and with people. This society loves things and uses people. Uh, Almost all of us probably worked at a job where we barely survived and got by. And the longer we were there, if we were lucky, and we're older, and so a lot of us were had good jobs where we were paid well and we were compensated well and we had good employers. That's not the norm anymore, but it used to be a norm. When I was when I was a working man, that was no, I worked for terrible people. Uh, but for a lot of you, there was a you probably had that experience of working for good people and were well paid. I think that's pretty much gone. At any rate, uh, we have to reverse our standards. We have to love people and use things. And that has to be a, something that you set in your heart and your mind as a goal. And you have to be aware that our society has taught us the opposite. I want to show you something that I bought at a store that I think just so makes this crystal clear. This says, warning, if you value your life as much as I value this truck, don't mess with it. And what does he mean by that? It means he loves his truck. He loves this thing. Yeah. But he couldn't care less about you, and he'll get his gun and shoot you if you mess with his truck. That's what this says. This institutionalizes loving things and using people. Yep. Uh, if you ever come to a piece of, of a gate, private property, with a sign on it that said, uh, there's nothing here worth dying for. Why? Because if you try to steal some of his stuff that he loves and treasures, he will kill you. Why? Because he doesn't care about you. Human beings aren't what he loves. Human being that is hungry and can't feed his family and his children are starving, that doesn't mean anything to him. You go on his property, he'll shoot you. That's the attitude, overarching attitude, that this country has and wants you to have and what you taught. Now, that's, those are extremes. There are very few, you know, that, and they, they don't mean it. They probably, they're not going to shoot somebody, although what happened just happened in Georgia last year. They, here's this black guy running down the neighborhood, yep. and they're sure he stole something. He stole something from someone's garage. These guys chase him down and end up killing him. Why? Because they love their things, and they use people. And if somebody, a person might be stealing their things, he loses all rights. He, he's not even a human being anymore. You get a gun and you chase him down. And that happens all over our, it happens all the time. Uh, stand your ground laws. Love your things. Use people. Kill people if they try to get your things. Perfectly right. Good. You're a good guy if you kill someone who tries to take something from you. So that is something, those are two values you have to work on. You have to work on that you love things, you love, you use things. Things are useful. You need them. you got to have them. Nothing wrong with things. But you love people. And if someone is in need, you give them. You meet the need. Because people are important and things are not. And you're important. And filling your life full of things that hinder your well-being, you're important enough to get rid of them. Treasure yourself over your things and that's sadly what happens is when we're, our vans are full of stuff and our homes are full of stuff that makes our life miserable it's because we don't love ourselves and treasure ourselves enough mm -hmm. and you got to love yourself enough to think 
I'm more important than all this crap I have. Yep. And if getting rid of it will make me happier and better, I will gladly get rid of it. And that we don't think that way. We love our things even more than we love ourselves. And it's a hard switch. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I've been doing it. I've been working at it for a long time. And I got a van full of crap. <laughs> Where did all this crap come from? How do I get rid of it? It's not easy. I'm not suggesting it's easy. I'm saying it's a virus. And the first step is acknowledging you have a problem and starting to work on it. So I'm just making you aware. So the next relationship is to nature. A hunter-gatherer, the environment of evolutionary adaptedness for every homo sapien uh, before 10,000 years ago was to be in nature. And you're all doing that. That's why you're here. That's why your lives are suddenly, for most of you, much, much better. Just because when you wake up in the morning, you are surrounded by nature and you're getting out in it and you're enjoying it and you're thriving. Nature will heal you. Nature will heal you because that's where you thrive, where you flourish, where you become an objective standard of what a human being should be. A human being should be directly connected to nature. For 999.9% 900, .9 of human existence, nature was the only thing in your life. And now it's nothing in our life. Mm -hmm. And no organism can adapt to that in 10,000 years. We're, our society, American society in particular, is incredibly miserable. It's because we are at war and fighting with nature, with each other, and we're loving things. And so all those things, and, and you're doing that. I mean, just by being here, you're finding yourself every morning, you wake up, you set up camp, you go outside, you're in nature. Go outside and sit. One of the best things you can do is just to go outside and be connected to nature. Be quiet, just be with it. One of the one of the one of the most life changing things you can do is go out some night and just stare at the stars. Mm -hmm. Just contemplate. You know, you don't have to do meditate or do. Just sit out there and look at the stars. Wake up some morning, go outside with your coffee or your tea or your diet Pepsi, and just sit out there and look at the beauty and the grandeur of of the world that we live in, and allow it. Allow it to change you, and it will. It will. It will heal you. And all these things, that's how we will heal the virus. And finally, you have to have a right relationship with the sacred. Now, I'm not going to make any uh, comment about what is sacred. To each of us, there will be something different that's sacred. Uh, and, I, and so I can't even begin, and I, I dare not and make any suggestion to you what you should find sacred. By sacred, I mean something, I, when I think of sacred, I, what I always think of is in the De Declaration of Independence, where the Founding Fathers committed their lives, their livelihood, and their sacred honor to the cause of freeing the United States from, from what would become the United States from England. And that phrase, sacred honor, this was something, you know, they were pledging, they were pledging their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor. These were the things that they were willing to die for, to live for and die for. And this, so what is sacred is in your life is what you are prepared to live and die for. Don't let it be things. Let it be people. And let it be whatever the guiding force is. The force that guides the stars guides you and me and all of us. So allow that force, the force that guides the stars, that guided evolution, that intelligent designer, whatever that is. And I don't know what it is. I'm not going to tell you what it is. If I did, I wouldn't tell. If I did, no, I wouldn't tell you. Uh, you got to find it for yourself. It's your path. I don't know your path. Uh, my path is not yours. Find a right relationship with the sacred because humans need that. Um, and, and one of the one of the things I've been studying is that idea of uh, nature, and nature is of uh, animism. All human beings are born animus. All human beings are born. If you go to a bookstore anywhere in America, almost anywhere in the world, and there's a children's sections, you're going to find talking monkeys. 
aren't you? You're going to find uh, talking railroad trains. And all humans are born believing that there is spirit, life, intelligence in all things on earth. Every child is born that way. And we tolerate it for the most part while they're children. And as soon as they start to get older, we beat it out of them. Because our society hates the idea that they children believe that. But all children, all homo sapien children are born animus. Believing that uh, life, spirit infuses, consciousness infuses the natural world. And so if you're a religious person and you from a religious background, then your parents teach you, no, you the only sacred thing is our, our religion, whatever your religion that religion happened to be. Or if you are in a scientific household, you're taught no, no, uh, Nate, rocks don't have any any mind or spirit or consciousness. Uh, dogs don't have souls, they're not going to heaven. Uh, and so immediately, as soon as you hit grade school, your those things are taught out of you. But you were born with them. And if it's something you're born with, this was uh, Carl Jung's main idea. If all humans are born with it, then it's part of our environment of evolutionary adaptedness. And in every study of every group of hunter-gatherer peoples, nomadic peoples, there was an honoring of the sacredness of nature. And I think mm -hmm. if we can get back to that, and I think probably most of you here are well along on your way whether it's an intellectual idea a thought in your mind or just a knowing in your heart yes. nature is sacred and to be loved and to be honored and to be revered and all hunter gatherers had that and you're born with it you were just trained out of you uh and if you get back to that you're going to be and and it doesn't have to compete with whatever your spiritual ideas are whatever your religious ideas are I'm not saying that at all. In fact, most of you probably came up with a Christian background. Well, why do we have uh, Easter bunnies? Because <laughs> when uh, when Christianity interacted with the pagans' people, the one of the ways they brought the pagan people into the church was to incorporate their yeah. animus beliefs, and so a fairly harmless way to bring in uh, pagan peoples into the faith was to offer them bunnies. And so at Easter, when we when we celebrate the, the resurrection of Christ, when Christians celebrate the resurrections of Christ, they have Easter bunnies. Why? Because the kids believe that. They bring the kids in. And once you can bring the kids in, you can have them grow in the faith. So I'm saying there doesn't have to be a competition. It isn't one or the other. For me, uh, spirituality has no competition with science and no competition with animism at all. So I'm not trying to override your belief uh, in any way, shape, or form, whatever it may be. Okay, I'm done. So it is quite impressive, isn't it? You may agree or disagree, but this is a happy community and they do a lot of things for the community and they donate money, I mean, people donate money to Hawa. They help the community actively and you learn about all of that during the RTR. It's a great, great community to belong to. It's a very good place. So I hope you liked the video. If so, 
please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and share this video with someone else that may, con may be considering this type of life. It's a, it's a great experience coming to the RTR. So thank you very much for being here. Have a great day.